So what does Ken want to talk about? He wants to talk about tripods. Let's figure out everything we need to know about tripods. So here we are with our next section called, What Does Ken Want to Talk About? Ken's been missing in action because a man Ken. never comes to work. I know. <laughs> it was a nice vacation. I was doing that around the world thing. Really? You know. Nice. No. Okay. <laughs> he was curling over at Van Nuys. As a matter of fact, I was curling in Arizona. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so I go okay. from a really warm place to a hot place to go curling. <laughs> that just makes perfect sense. Yeah, of course. <laughs> What's the most important thing in shooting? The most important thing in shooting? One of the most important Light. things. Light. That would be correct. Because some people say that camera is our instrument. But indeed, light. Light is Very our instrument. But stability is also one, too. <laughs> yes. Okay. Stability is yes. also one. Yes. Because if we don't have enough light and we do something natural light, we may not be able to hold the camera and basically get our image that we needed in the first place. Okay. You're trying to you trying to talk to us about tripods, Ken? It's a great idea. Okay. Tripods. Great absolutely. Idea. Great. As tripods go, yes, that is your platform that you're starting from. That's true. So I, I get a guess, lot. Go ahead. No, no. Keep going. <laughs> I would guess most people, after they buy a camera and a lens or two, you get a tripod. Probably. It's so, pretty natural. <laughs> so I really like to oh, say, no. you know, I have a Hasselblad and I want to put it on that tripod. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Um, well, this is a Gobo Joby thing. These are great. Uh, actually, these are, they are great. Actually great. But the trouble is, think of what you're putting on it comparative to what the tripod is. That makes sense. Because <laughs> if we, you I got have me somebody there. asking me for a Hasselblad and they go, well, I have a Hasselblad and I want to put a tripod underneath it. And they pull this out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work at that's all. That's a problem. So that's going to be a small little problem. So yeah, that's not going to work at all. That's not stable at all. <laughs> No. So that is dead. Okay, you can use something a little better. Okay. But again, this is really not going to be stable for a bigger camera on top of it. You may be able to get the shot, but you're probably not going to be able to angle the camera at the angle you may want to shoot at. Because again. you're now so low to the ground, you may want to have that, you know, angle up. That's why I use uh, hi hats for your video side. Mm -hmm. Because you can hold about 200 pounds of load at a very low angle, so you get that real monstrous scene of you know the explosion happening, or yep. your person jumping through the scene, or you have a fight scene. You're getting the grandeur of that. I love my hi hat, man. So, those those wide on a 25 millimeter yeah. in the Arizona desert hi hat. It's oh amazing. my gosh, but it's been so fun. They're not cheap either. Yeah. Nope. Hi hats go for 200, 300 dollars, yep. and not including the head. So now you have to add the head on top of that. So it's all relative to what we're looking at, to what you want to use it for. So when you're using still photography, we really want to have a still head on it, like a ball head or a three-way pan tilt. Which a three-way pan tilt head, uh, those things are amazing these days. I love those. If you're doing product photography, if you're doing landscape photography, anything that you need to have real precise movements, as, as far as your angles are concerned, you have individual head control. As a matter of fact. Do we have one of those we can look at? Oh, yeah. well, how about it? Also, for $20, Ken, this is fantastic. I know how you like small tripods. <laughs> I love small tripods. This is a tripod for ants. Yeah, what so is this? <laughs> this is basically a slick one. Now, this one handles about 10 pounds of load. But we have individual head movements here. So I can lock that, and then I can go to my vertical if I want to, horizontal. And I also have a separate pan feature, so I can have complete control over the camera itself. The problem I run into is load capacity versus the weight of the camera capacity. And most of the time, people are overloading their tripods, not really realizing why or why is it not stable anymore. Well, the manufacturers have to put in, yes, a number load that mm -hmm. they have to work on for legal purposes at the same time as they're trying to help you figure out what it is that you need to get. So if this holds about five pounds of load, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to really put a 5D Mark III with a 70 to 200 to 8 lens on it. No. It's not going to handle it. Well, it may handle it. It, it may <laughs> not handle it. Yeah. But that's where we run into a little bit of a sticking point. To keep something stable, I usually suggest three to four times above the load capacity. Interesting. Three to four times? Three to four times. Interesting. So when you're talking still photography, 
On the head specifically, if it's a head separate from the tripod, I like to do three to four times above the load I'm doing. So if you have a 20 pound camera, I you're saying you want a 60 pound a tripod capacity. little handy, a 60 That's pound what I got, capacity. man. I, I just yes. got the, uh, the, the Satchler 7 plus 7. Why? Because, uh, and it's rated up to 100 pounds of camera. Yeah. And I've got a 30 pound rig. Yeah. And it's and it feels just right. It feels perfect. It feels just like butter. right. It's wonderful. And I love it. Exactly why I make the mention saying three to four times. So that's you a can great go, that's a great thing to know. Well, yeah, it is. And that's that's why when people come to me, they're kind of shocked. And I'm like, well, look, you you're putting something on there that you want to be stable. That's the reason why you're using a tripod. Mm -hmm. You're not buying it because you want to look good. You, frankly, a lot of people don't like carrying tripods around. It's a hassle. <laughs> so so yes, we got the little tiny ones out here. This is going to be a good entry point too. This is about $129 by Slick. This is the Pro DX500. Mm. Uh, they have a 400, which is a little bit smaller in size, mm -hmm. but it handles actually one pound more of weight. So it handles 11 pounds. This thing actually handles 10 pounds. This would be great for like a 5D with a 16 to 35 or something. Sure, oh, yeah. something on the lighter side. Don't think you're going to work with a 70 to 200 with that. Yeah. Now. Okay. You know, you're you're putting it to its maximum load capacity. It can handle it. But you may find it not to be very stable, especially on the longer lengths of the focal length. Yeah, because now it's you're gonna, looking at five pounds, six pounds, and then if you want to do plus like the additional pounds. three pounds on the camera. So you're looking at about seven pounds right there. And then if you have anything else, you add a light on top of it, your flash head. Sure. Yeah. That adds more weight to it too. So people remember, oh wait, I've got this rig. You said rigging your camera. Well, your camera is probably only around ten pounds, but your rigging is another twenty pounds worth of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Throw everything on it. So. The next one that I would probably suggest is people want to have a little bit more options on the tripod. So for instance, instead of just going up and down, people want to shoot like say product photography or they want to shoot some copy work, like a copy stand. So they need to have a crossbar or something to bring it over. Well, Manfrotto introduced several years ago, basically this series, which is the 190X Pro series or 055X Pro series. The difference is going to be just load capacity again. Mm -hmm. So this one, in fact, has the ability of going on a horizontal crossbar. Uh. So now I can lock this in. We've got a little adapter on here just for uh, display purposes, but uh, the head would go on to here. So now I'm able to shoot directly down. Now you will have to counterbalance this with like a weight or something. Otherwise, yeah, your camera is just going to flip right over. So here's another option out there. Plus, they have other opportunities with different leg angles that you can work with. So if I needed to get a different, you know, lower the ground, or if I needed to get a, a different angle within my shot, I have those options within the tripod itself. $220, not bad. That's an aluminum? This is aluminum. Mm -hmm. They do make a uh, carbon fiber variety of it mm -hmm. also, which goes closer to like 400 in price. Uh, usually carbon fiber is also another good material to work from, which lends me into a traveling tripod because a lot ah, of people... So when I'm going to New York and I want to carry something in my backpack, is this my tripod? This would be your tripod. Now this one handles 17 pounds of load. Oh, that's so nice. So comparative wise, you know, we're looking at around maybe in about 12 pounds on this one. Uh, the 055 version is going to be, I think, around about 15 to 16 pounds of load. And this one is going to be... 17 pounds of load, but comes with the head. So this isn't going to be one of those a la carte ones where you actually have to buy the head separate. Is Carbon this? fiber is actually some of the best properties and materials that you can make for a tripod because it absorbs and dampens vibrations. Right. But it also tends to run more expensive because of the materials themselves yeah, are harder to process. Expensive. So what's the price point on this guy? Uh, this one sells at around 350 in price. Me photo 350. Whoa. Yes. Now again, comes with the head. And they're using an Arca Swiss style plate. Most tripods, and this is another thing I always run into with uh, people, they call up and say, oh, I've lost the, the thing that puts onto the camera and, and I can't figure out which one it is. And I, I'm at a loss a lot of times because they are not universal. That's the problem. Most uh, people assume all plates for these are universal and they're really <clears throat> not. Sometimes investing in a tripod is better because you can get the plates for them from a local, you know, photography store or online. And I've tried to get them. We usually mine carry them all the time. On the same platform. And even if yeah. you have different tripods, you get the same yeah, heads plate for them. You get the plate adapters or something. Do you guys like story. the Swiss style? I don't, personally. I, Why is it such a stand? I mean, like. Well, it's becoming an industry standard, is that dovetail lock. 
and well, me photos using it, Enduro uses it, uh, Benro, they're all similar manufacturer right there. But so does Foba, Arcus Swiss. Uh, but what happens Acrotec. if this gets loose and your camera comes slightly? There's well, nothing to catch it. Is there? Actually, there is. Okay. On it, there's two little indents. If you see that here. Okay. Yeah. On the plate, there are two little pins. So if this loosens up just a little bit. The camera is going to start sliding back and forth, but okay. it's not going to come off physically. If it loosens just a little bit, but if you loosen a you lot, you have to it comes literally off. take the. You have to turn this literally about f two revolutions before it will mm. literally come off. Okay. Whereas with Monfrotto, you've got a pin, you've got a, you've got a button, you got to push to There's release it. There's a quick it. release assembly that yes has a pin that is a lock feature, that which you I have to release first. Which I greatly prefer yeah, personally. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. You just know it's not going to come out of that until you push the pin. You know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Carbon fiber, aluminum, those are really so the two the brands. These, these are still tripods. These mm. are not fluid heads. They're designed right. to lock it in yeah. place and take the image. So when you're going video, you <coughs> really want to go with a video head. Uh, you know, similar to you know what the cameras are being mounted on right now, we've got, this is a, a 502 head from Monfrotto, which handles a fair amount of weight. Video, we can get away with a little bit less load capacity versus the still side. Really? I can go up to two times because a lot of times you're not inverting the camera. You're always in a horizontal path. So you literally don't have any load capacity that's going to be shifted off to the side like you will on a ball head or such. So what's nice about that platform there is you can you can level the head. Yeah, it and has a bull level or as a bull level is really nice. Yeah. And that's the last one I bought was that because I just tired of trying to move the legs around, try to get it level. You know, it's seventy five really millimeter bull? This is 75. Yeah. Yeah. So the typically 75, 100. There's even 60s now. Is there? So wow. uh, their their low end version of this or their entry level is a 60 millimeter bolo, and you can get adapters to get it into the 75 and the 100. So Mine's it is possible. Yeah. Well, you're special. Yeah. Thanks. That's amazing. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, but you know the disadvantage. <laughs> yours definitely goes to 11. <laughs> the disadvantage for me though is you lose that post uh, being able to rate. You can't get it up uh, as high, so you lose. A, yeah. So a that is there. a drawback. So you really have to go with either uh, a tripod that doesn't have the bowl leveler. So you can go with. Uh, Monfrotto makes a couple with geared columns in the center, mm -hmm. which you can take it really high. The only problem is though you can't get one of their heavy duty heads like the. Uh, the 504 heads or so. Uh, are they all bowl? Those are only bowl adapter oh, wow, lenses. I didn't know. Now they do have a bowl adapter you can utilize to get it to a flat plate, but that extends it up even more and yeah, it becomes a little more unstable. Yeah. So, yeah, so all these little the trade offs. Benro that, uh, the Benro is the last one I bought. And Benro was under is, Lars's suggestion. I love Benro. Benro, Benro the S8 head is yep. fantastic. She got. That yep, head yep. is amazing because you do have variable friction control, which mm -hmm. is, here's the other thing, you're going to get different features involved in the different heads at the different prices too. So within like, for instance, this one, I have a separate pan lock from my head itself so I can do panoramics with it. I also have a friction control versus just a lock on the actual head too. Mm -hmm. So I can decrease the, uh, or I can uh, literally let the head go to pan and tilt, but I can increase the friction to be a little bit more precise with my composing. So really works out well for this. When you drop down to the, the lower size, you usually only have a single knob yeah. to, work with, to work with, which you don't have friction control, right. you don't have that ability. So once you put it in there, hopefully when you lock it, it doesn't sag, right. which sometimes I it will do. there's a little difference. $300, 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your best so solution for traveling? Get so. I, you know if what? You, that I has mean, become our absolute number one popular seller. This is one of our best sellers that we carry. Makes sense. From the aluminum version to the uh, carbon fiber. Now, they do also make one level heavier duty, which will handle about 27 pounds of load versus 17 pounds. So if you do have that 70 to 200 2.8 2 lens and you really want it to be solid and stable, uh, that works great. There's one more trick this does, though. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yes, do tell. If you grab the padded leg, it'll actually break off right here. The so I can take this off. You know, you ruin all the spoiling. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You're like a kid. I saw it coming. It's a monopod. Yes, you, you, you saw it coming, so you, you predicted that one. So you take the base off of it, too. Center column literally will come out completely. So I can leave that behind and combine these two together. And I do. I get a monopod. You know, there are certain places that you can't take tripods with you. Uh, typically, no museum allows a tripod in the place. But some of them will actually allow a monopod in, 
Really? Some. Which is kind of three legs. Oh, funny. Okay. One leg, you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So now I've got a monopod. It's a walking that I can stick use. with a camera. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Or if you need yeah. to go dark alley, you know, it can help you get out of that situation. Also. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a nunchuck. Yeah, carbon fiber nunchuck. <laughs> um, it also comes with spiked feet. Comes with a bag too, so that's one of the options. It's a spear. Too. It's a carbon fiber spear. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> so, but I, what I haven't seen here, Ken, and I think we need What's to that? show, is we have some. I feel I still feel like these are kind of lower end still pods. Do we have one that's a little beefier, a little heavier that we can look at that that is going to handle a Mark III and with some things on it, but just a little heavier than this? So this is Enduro. This is a CT32313. Uh, they make a four section version. They make a three section version. Okay. So this is going to handle close to around almost 30 pounds of load just for the leg set. Okay. The head on this one is actually a Monfrotto. This is the uh, 055. Uh, MH055 version with RC2 plate. So as you're talking about different plates, mm -hmm. they come in different styles and heads, mm -hmm. so you can get an RC4 version, you can get yeah. the RC2 version. I love that, that you have these different plates. I know. Well, like I said, you can get it in one of the two styles, so okay. if you have all That's the nice. one style plate, oh, you can get it that way. Okay. Acrotech is another head that we carry here, which is more of a local company, they're out in Pomona. They make a beautiful product, and they're not inexpensive because they're all machined aluminum, but they hold a very good amount of load. And they're very smooth, too, so I've had people really kind of use them for video, but they're really not for video, so you can kind of sometimes get away with certain things, like in panning. Yeah. You know, you can't do everything, but you may be able to do it in a pinch. Okay, so let's do this. How much is this tripod? Uh, it's 220. And how much is this tripod? This one is closer to around about almost four fifty, five hundred bucks. Okay, so just this is just for the base. Just for the base. Just for the base. Right. So then here, the head, fiber base. Here's my here's my take on this. You can either buy this tripod, and then later when this isn't doing what you wanted to, buy this one, or you can just buy this one in the beginning. <laughs> and that's <laughs> and my correct. sense about everyone who buys a small tripod is that you either get it small enough so you can carry it in your in your uh, backpack which I think is a valid, and, and the, actually the reason I would buy this, is, and I probably will buy this, is to be able to have it in my backpack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then just buy something that's gonna be sturdy and heavy duty, and you can take it out and put it on, and it's bulletproof, and you can shoot in the wind, and you know, that's and all that kind thing. of stuff. And so I that's just think this one is, it's a nice tripod, don't get me wrong, it's a great tripod, but so I just think stepping up to a heavy duty tripod is worth your first purchase. For $200 versus 400, I would spend the $400 because well, you're gonna end up buying actually, them both anyway. this would've been a little higher because the head is separate. Well, so was it on this, right? So yeah, we're looking at 239 for this particular head. Right. So, you know, you're at a $600, $700 tripod now, which it put things in perspective. Yeah. You spent how much on your 5D Mark III? Over three grand. Over three grand. The lens you put on that was over probably two grand. Yeah. So you're talking fifty five hundred dollars in camera gear that you're putting on something <laughs> twenty bucks. Okay. So yeah. Well, the difference between my okay, the first tripod I ever bought was a Gitzo. Fantastic. And it's a metal, all metal tripod. They used to be machine gun yes. mounts in the wow. Second World War. Wow. I still have that tripod. It is bulletproof, literally. <laughs> and great. it's a tank and it's a monster but it does last forever so the nice thing about buying a nice tripod is unlike your camera it won't be out of style it won't be updated you're going to use a tripod like this for years and years and years yeah. hopefully the rest of your life um, so we're going to talk about pistol, grip pistol heads. grip heads yeah so we're going to talk about pistol grip heads a little bit here the reason i love them is because i can grab it i can adjust my camera i can quickly put it exactly where i want it to be and that's why i love them and i shoot fast fast and furious and so uh that's why i like them so Ken, why is it you don't like them? Because again, people put too much load on these things. Because when they're designed to handle only 11 pounds, oh, I want to put my 70 to 200 28 with my 5D Mark III again I do that on this. All the time. All the time. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. I did it all the time. <laughs> and you know, you keep it horizontal. That's okay. Once you go vertical, but at least on that with lens, the you don't I have don't, to worry about yeah, that. I flipped the lens because it's got a collar on it. So. It's yeah. got the collar on it, but most don't have collars on them. So if you're using a heavy duty lens or a heavier lens, heavier camera body, yeah, when you put it on that angle, it's not gonna hold it or it's gonna sag. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to wonder why I'm not getting the same shot I expected. So yeah, no, they are really great for fast things. They're not as precise because again, once I release, it locks the head. So if it's not in the right position that I want it to be in, it's not going to be the way I want it. So you may need to shoot a little looser, widen the shot a little bit so you can crop a little better and you know reconnect. 
So that might actually be an okay way to use that particular head. And that's what Ken wanted to talk about today. And that's what Ken wanted to talk about. So remember, you can see this <laughs> entire episode stitched together on at the Slanted Lens, where you'll see all the segments from April put together in one segment. Or you can watch, listen to the podcast. <laughs> why, why watch this when you could listen to this? That's right. On our uh, Trench of the Trenches podcast. He's enthused by this one. You are enthused by it. Well, I don't get to uh, play with these very often. <laughs> I don't let him, let him use mine. He doesn't. Lars, <laughs> stop touching my pistol grip. Get away from the pistol grip. <laughs>